So first and foremost, Doug, thank you so much for uh, giving me some time to speak with you today. I really appreciate it. Uh, I would just love if you could just introduce yourself. Uh, tell me about yourself and kind of where do you where do you fit into this Flathead Valley community? So in introducing, I assume you're saying uh, who am I and what I do. I, I own a uh, landscape company here in the valley and uh, on a couple of Airbnbs. Uh, that's, so that's how I make my living. Um, I uh, have three kids that are all grown and um, I'm married. Um, how do I fit in the community? Uh, I've lived here 24 years and I have uh, been involved since I got here. Uh, I served on the Whitefish City Council for four years. I was deputy mayor for two years. Uh, everything from coaching soccer to uh, serving as choir director at my church, uh, serving on different boards and committees, and um, uh, currently serve on the uh, Flathead Library Systems uh, Board of Trustees. Um, good synopsis. Thank you. <laughs> um, so as you know, your opponent, Dave Fern has, he's a seasoned former legislator. Um, and I'm just curious as to what, what was the drive that got you to enter the race this year, um, as a first time state house, uh, representative, what, what, why this year was the year for, uh, you to run? Well, I'm not running for the state house. I'm running for the Senate. Well, I yeah, have, the I have Senate, run, the Senate for, run. Yeah. So I ran for the house 10 years ago. And um, at the time that I did it, I knew it would be a sacrifice for my family because I was still raising kids. Uh, I, I had a strong desire to do it then. That desire has not abated. And so I had said, well, I'm going to wait. Uh, till my kids are grown and out of the house before I run again, because I'd rather just spend the time with kids. And uh, so my kids are, my youngest is in college now. And uh, so uh, there's nothing that's really holding me back from doing it. Um, I, I, I enjoy the process. I, I like, uh, I like trying to come up with solutions to problems. I like, uh, being an advocate for um, for people that that live here, and uh, this is, as far as I know, the best way to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you kind of touched on this, but the process is something that I know that you've talked about, um, and you have experience uh, from like your time as a counselor, um, being on the super local uh, end of that. And so with that experience and with that knowledge, how do you plan to represent your community in Helena, uh, keeping the locals in mind? Well, the, the first thing you have to realize is that people are not statistics. They are, they are individuals. And so the decisions that you make uh, are going to affect people individually. And I don't think you can fail to look at that. Um that said, you know, statistics are valuable in, the, in that they, they tell us a lot of things about uh, your constituents. Um, my goal is to advocate for the people that live here uh, and not fall into the common trap of being an advocate for government itself. So many times when you hear an argument, uh, particularly financial, uh, about people's money problems or what uh, different organizations, different government entities need in funding. Everybody is saying, oh, woe is me. Woe for the poor government. They need more money. Um, to, to give you an example, I read an article not too long ago uh, about Trump's impact on the uh, finances versus uh, Harris's. And it was saying that Trump would cost like his po po policies was called like, like $10.8 trillion and hers would cost 8.6, something like that. 
And I thought, well, there's no way on earth that makes any sense. And so I go and read the article and the article was totally written from the standpoint of it was going to cost government funding. So she was going to increase government funding. He was going to decrease the government funding. And they were lamenting the fact that $2 trillion worth of funding for government was going to be lost. Well, that's a, that's a victory for taxpayers. So it, it's an idiotic viewpoint that is totally backwards of advocating for people. When people work for a living, it's their money. It's not the government's money. It's their money. They deserve to keep their money. And therefore, the government should be obligated to spend as little as humanly possible while providing basic services that the people expect. Yeah. Beyond that, that money should be given back to the people. It shouldn't be taken in the first place. I just got my $675 refund back from the state government. What does that tell us? It tells us that the government took more money than they needed. So this is like the, what, the third disbursement that they've made. They took way too much money. They didn't need that much money. And we could debate whether the whether any of it was warranted in the first place, because I think the government budget is bloated. A balanced budget does not guarantee a, uh, a, a, a budget that's not bloated. And I think that it is bloated. And I think you can ask different people in the legislature and they will admit that it is bloated. So look where it's bloated and start doing something about it. But at any rate, um, the the money should not have been taken from the taxpayer in the first place. So the government takes it, they can earn interest on it. And two years later, they can give you back a portion of that. Well, Merry Christmas. I mean, that that's, it's just not a good gift. Um, my goal is to see that the government does not take it from you in the first place. If the government thinks you're too stupid to manage your own money, then they they can take it. Well, I say that you're not that stupid and that you can manage your own money. So keep your own money. And then maybe you can afford a house. Maybe you can afford to do the things that you hope to dream and dream to do, such as start a business. Mm -hmm. You can do a lot better without the government's interference. What are some possible um, policies or uh, pieces of legislation that you've maybe considered um, supporting or bringing forward to kind of address uh, and alleviate the fact that we don't taxpayers aren't getting a lot back into their pockets um well the first one uh is montana is one of only 10 states that taxes social security so they're taking money that you've already paid taxes on in the first place and they're taxing it again that is immoral and you know people will defend it by saying well the government needs the money they got to get it somehow we don't have a sales tax well, you know what? If you have to steal money in order to make ends meet, then I would say, look at what your spending is and change your spending. So this is a, a tax that one is immoral because it's a double tax. And two, not everybody retires rich. Some people need that money to survive. And in that, that is why Social Security came up in the first place. So now you're taking the money that you mandatorily made them give you. It's, it's idiotic. And, uh, and, and so I, I would gladly uh, support or sponsor a bill that does away with that. And I, know, and I know that that has come up in state government before. They've tried to do it. And yet they don't have the, the resolve to do that. That is an absolute disgrace to Montanans, particularly elderly Montanans. And so that that is that is one that I'm certainly willing to to work on. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I uh, was reading your responses to the questionnaire and I wrote a question actually today to ask you about that. So I appreciate you just going into it. Um, <clears throat> I also wanted to talk about housing uh, with you. Obviously, housing is a really big deal to a lot of people in our community, whether that be lack of affordable housing or property taxes, it's just kind of an umbrella of issues right now. And um, 
As a candidate running to represent some of the city of Whitefish, what uh, issues are you seeing impact the local community? Um, and have you thought through any solutions that the legislature could um, could could implement to help help our Flathead Valley community? Well, yeah, it's not just Whitefish. I mean, I'm, I would be representing Columbia Falls, Essex, Stryker. Uh, you know, it's, it's a big area here, this district is. And um, and so I'm, I'm aware of, uh, of people's needs for more than just the city of Whitefish. But as, as far as affordable housing goes, uh, is, is it really a help to have state government get involved with it? Is state government a part of the problem? It, it, you you said it's it, you're right. It's one umbrella issue that uh, property taxes, affordable housing, inflation, all of that stuff works together. And I would submit to you that the government is the cause of a lot of the problems. And now they're trying to come up with solutions. the The problem is that government screws one thing up, and then they decide to fix what they screwed up. And they do it by coming up with a solution for a symptom instead of for the actual problem. So my goal would be to think logically and rationally enough and hopefully wise enough that I come up with solutions to the real problem. I don't want to look for how to put a Band-Aid on a symptom. I want to solve the problem. Uh, inflation, I think, is government caused. Therefore, deal with the inflation and, and what caused it. And, and then that will help bring uh, the cost of, of housing. Well, it will, it will, I, I won't say that it will bring the cost of housing down. It will make housing more affordable to people because they'll have more money in their pockets to do it. You know, interest rates, all that, all that stuff that is, is just from government interference. Government should exist to protect people from wrongs, to provide uh, infrastructure such as roads and bridges, and to keep from having chaos. We need to have organization in our lives. And everybody should be willing to pay taxes because we're part of a society. No man is an island, and we all have to live together. Therefore, there needs to be organization instead of chaos. So I don't deny that. And I don't think most thinking people would. The question is, is the government really supposed to be the savior, the, the end all for all people? Is it supposed to solve everybody's problems in every situation? Is it supposed to be your nanny? And the answer is that's not the way that it was intended. You know, 100 years ago, I think, is just when income tax even started, uh, People managed to live without it before that. Mm -hmm. Now look how much they take. So, uh, and and people love to talk about property taxes, but income taxes are, are just as bad. Uh, so we can we can we can all cry about the uh, the property tax rate, but I would say do the same about income tax rate. And um, the solution, in my opinion, is to quit spending money. So you look at what is really necessary uh, for people. What, what should the government provide as a service to people? And you spend money on that and you give the rest back to the people so that they can do what they want to with it. You know, ev everybody has a, a right to succeed. Everybody has a right to try. And uh, everybody has a right to fail as well. And so give people the freedom to do that. What other policies or issues are you kind of really focused on um, as we're entering the last couple of months before November? What what when they when people see your name on the ballot, what do they want? What do you want them to think? I want them to think that this is somebody that cares enough about them that I would allow them to live their lives freely, um, without being canceled, um, with without. Uh, feeling an undue burden to support government. 
uh, it's it's sort of a it, it's sort of a weird situation where the onus is put on us to support government, but yet then you've got the whole other side of it where people expect government to support them. And so it seems to me that most things these days are looked at uh, from a Robin Hood standpoint where you the, the government feels the need to take from one group to give to another group. So they're, they're putting a huge burden on one group in order to subsidize another group. And, and I think that people are not as stupid as the government thinks that they are and that people will be able to make uh, not just a living on their own, but to thrive on their own if the government would get out of the way. Uh, there, there are certain things that are very in, important to me. Um, uh, I've just started getting involved with um, the, the Coalition for a Clean CFAC and uh, the, the cleanup of, of that property. And I think that the way that it's been done is, uh, is, is wrong. I think the solution that they came up with is wrong. And I think the people that will suffer are the people in Columbia Falls or the fish in the Flathead River. Uh, that kind of stuff needs to be dealt with and it needs to be dealt with logically and rationally. And if you look at their, um, if you look at their modeling for, for ranking their solutions, they're, they're flawed. They're, they're grossly flawed. And I intend to start working on that. Um, Quality of life is a big thing, and it can be financial, but it also can be environmental. Um, but I, I would go beyond that and say that it is not my goal to see how many bills I can get passed into law. If that is my scorecard, then I have probably failed my constituents because I don't think people are asking for more and more and more regulation more and more laws that they have to wonder about and have to adjust to. So I intend to be very judicious about passing new laws because there are unintended consequences of doing such things. And because I think most laws are simply made to cover existing mistakes. So, so instead, let's just uncover and undo those existing mistakes. Out of curiosity, I know last uh, legislative session, a big focus of the governor's was um, limiting red tape and like kind of removing a bunch of laws that might have been just extra that didn't really do anything. Um, are you in support of that kind of idea? And are you not, looking to maybe do that more? No, not necessarily. Um, you know, I, I, I brought up environmental, but, you know, pollution is, is a real thing. And so if you find uh, some company that's illegally dumping toxic chemicals in the river, somebody has to be a watchdog for that. And I think the expectation is it's the government. And so I'm, I'm for such things as that. But um, they, I, the, the one thing that comes to mind when you mention that is uh, to get rid of any red tape uh, in, in the name of affordable housing. Well, one, I don't think that's the government's responsibility to dictate housing prices. Two, those decisions can be made a lot better on a local level than they can a one size fits all from the government. So I probably depart from the, the Republicans in that um, I say the government ought to stay out of it. I, I give you a, a, a particular example. If you look at the city of Whitefish, which, again, I was intimately involved with, <laughs> they have rules and regulations in place, and some uh, builders and developers would say that those are onerous. But then look at property values in the city of Whitefish uh, compared to Columbia Falls. Uh, they're a lot higher. And so is it because of a higher cost to be in Whitefish, or is, is Whitefish a desirable area to be? I would submit to you that Whitefish is a desirable area to be. Therefore, it's more attractive to people. Therefore, they're willing to spend more money to do it. So the, the way that the city of Whitefish chooses to regulate um, uh, uh, the accessory apartments, for instance, on a property, they put restrictions on that. I think that that works for 
the people in the city of Whitefish. And I think if it does not work for the people in the city of Whitefish, they can elect new city councilors. Then you go over to Columbia Falls, they may have a different set of regulations and say, yeah, no, no, no extra permit needed for accessory dwelling units. And um, that, again, is their choice. I may not agree with City of Whitefish that says you have to be 150 feet back from the river before you can build a structure. But I also don't have to live in Whitefish. I also don't have to vote for a particular councillor way of, of thinking. You know, that I can vote for a different group of councillors. So making those decisions on a local level, there is a lot of value to that. And when you meet somebody in the grocery store and they say, Doug, why would you vote on this issue in such and such a way? I have to be able to look them in the eye. I have to be able to justify it. But I see that they are not a, stat a statistic. They are a person and it affects them. And um, so allowing local governments more freedom to do that is fine. But what, what's happening in the in the state is they are feeling pressure from people that are saying that housing is too expensive and they expect that the government needs to do something about it. So that means that the government is making more laws to do such things. And I say, leave the government out of it. The free market can dictate what will be. You know, one thing that could have been done that would keep uh, housing a lot more affordable in Montana is you could have forbid the producers of the TV show Yellowstone <laughs> from filming in Montana. You could have said you can't do that. And if you did that, properties would be cheaper and they'd be more livable. You make it a desirable place and more people are going to come. And that's just the that's how it works. But the government, one, should not tell people that they cannot film that that show here. Um, they should just be accepting that we live in a desirable area and this was bound to happen. So it's a it's a natural consequence of life, and it, 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 it things happen. You don't have to then come up and counteract what happens naturally in every situation. You mentioned that you might. That's kind of where something you might differ from Republicans. Um, Republicans on. Is there anything else uh, issue wise that you think is kind of unique to your campaign compared to maybe um, some other people who might be running in your party? I, I would venture to say that I, by and large, agree with uh, most Republican positions, but I don't intend to be held to the party line. Uh, if if I'm nothing more than an echo, then, uh, then, then you don't need me there. I have my own thoughts and opinions, and I, I hope that I would vote accordingly, and, and I hope that it's a, a common sense approach. But I just, I don't worship government. And, um, and I see great value and in, 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 in great need in government, but I don't worship government. And, and my goal is, is not to support government. It's, uh, it's, to, uh, it's, it's to make the individual's quality of life better. Well, sweet. Is there anything else that I haven't asked you um, or that you haven't gotten the chance to say that you think is important at this time? Yeah, I just wanted to open the floor for you. Right now, just in case there is a big thing that we might have uh, we might have missed. I think, I think one thing uh, it's on my platform and and I was reading about it just this morning is government accountability. So it's been in the news for the past week uh, that uh, uh, audits have been done at state government and uh, the they are accusing now uh, some of the different government agencies of not being accountable, not having a kept accurate records like they're required to do uh, for expenditures. A lot of that money is money that has been given by the federal government, and yet it's they've not been held accountable for it. So uh, I think that holding the accountable the government accountable for expenses is really important. I think there's a bigger problem. The bigger problem is that the federal government should not be doling out money because it's just our money that they're turning around and giving to the government and they're just doing it through the back door. And um, 
I, I think is unnecessary and uh, I, I think it's unfair to the taxpayer. I think it's a waste of taxpayer dollars. But the money's there. People need to be held accountable. So is is are they not being held accountable and there's corruption there? I don't know if there's corruption or not. But, you know, it's being investigated and it should be. That They said the same thing about the money uh, for the school systems. And so people uh, lament uh, what they consider to be a too small a budget for the school systems, and yet then there's all this unaccounted money. Well, where did it go? Uh, was it wasted? Could it have been spent in a better manner? Questions like that have to be answered, and so I'm glad to see that people are looking into it. Uh, one other thing that I would touch on is there is great conflict right now between the state legislature and the the court system in Montana. And um, I, as I've said, probably in the questionnaire that you ask, uh, everybody should stay in their own lane. So you have to ask, is there judicial activism going on from the bench? Um, when When we read stuff, you know, I, I don't care how professional you think they are. I think things can be slanted because we all have opinions. And so it's hard to know if what I'm reading is is really accurate, if it's the whole story. I think there's a lot more to the story than what we know. And I think it's I think it does bear investigation. I think the Senate is trying to investigate it. And it seems like the Supreme Court, from what I can read, is really indignant about being questioned. Um if you reverse the situation and it was the Supreme Court questioning whether or not the Senate was staying in their lane, whether there was something go wrong going on in the Senate, um, would the senators be offended? I bet they would. But does that mean they don't need to be investigated? No, it does not. So I think no matter who you are, I don't matter what uh, uh, position you're in, what branch of government you're in, I think that having... Uh, investigations and oversight may be necessary and people should be held accountable for what they're doing. The Supreme Court, to me, is looking like they are arrogant and they are going to resist any efforts to be held accountable by anybody. And um, so I don't know the extent to which the, the Senate has any power to really do anything anyway, I, because I, I'm just ignorant of that. I'm sure I, I, if I'm in state government, I'm sure I'd learn more about that. But I'll, I'm all for accountability for every branch, and uh, I think I think we all need to be held accountable. I think that's probably everything that I really wanted to touch base with you about this morning. Um, thank you so much for your for your time and your insights. I really appreciate it.